G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I like to teach beginners how to paint in acrylic. And if any of my lessons you feel, I can't do that, you just put some time and practice into it and you can do it. There's the sizes on the canvas there. And I'll also get some colors running up the screen just like that, because this is gonna be an autumn fall painting. Someone's been asking me, can you do one? I haven't done many of them, but um, I thought I'll do a layout of an autumn fall. So let's get right into it. So what I've got is a kind of a middle horizon line-ish thing here. We're gonna have a stream running in perspective of the layout of the trees. There's gonna be some darkness under here. The tops of them are gonna be coming up here and fading into the misty sky, okay? And this is a bit of a foreground hill coming in front, pushing behind further back. And probably a bit of a shrub if we can put something there. And we'll try and make this stream as interesting as possible. Okay, I'm going to start off with the craft white just to prime up the top half of the painting. No retarder in this because there's not an overly lot of blending to do. And I wanna get all that bit blocked in. So I'm just going to use my putter on a brush and I go right on it, push it right into the canvas there where I want it. Okay, just like that. And then I'll stroke all the lumps and bumps out of it, just left and right. Okay, so I want to get the sky colours in there. Now it's going to be a grey overcast colour of a sky. Now I've wiped that brush and I'm grabbing some cerulean blue and I want to mix with the grey over here. So we get the very grey, but it's got that hint of blue in it, a blue hue in there. Okay, so we're gonna get this, just push it on to the sky half. Now the top of the trees is roughly about here, okay? So I wanna get this to there, and then I can just stroke it left and right let that fade into there like that, just like so. Pushing this across and I'm getting my grey overcast sky. Okay, on the palette I've got some black gesso just to block in the lower half of the painting. As we will get our depth, so we're pretty much going to come across here. Okay, up there like that and just simply black gesso the whole bottom half of this in because this is going to add the depth to our water, our grass and our ground cover, whatever we're going to put there. Black gesso is going to dry like a chalkboard, flat black. So I've got my four colours here and, and I want a really light version of them, okay, just to get the tops in. So what I'm going to do is probably get, I've got forest green, sap green, burnt sienna, uh, red gold or deep orange and a yellow oxide. So let's just start with this one here and we'll grab a little bit of white into that. Just, you'll see what I'm going to do. So each colour is going to have a very light value. So what I want to do with this is grab the fan and just get some very light bits in the sky there. Just pulling down, put some there, let's say, and maybe some over here, nice and sharp and pointy, scratching down. Okay, and then I wanna wash this brush and grab some other colours in there. So I've washed it. I'm going to pick up some of the red gold slash deep orange. And I'm really paling that up, paling that up now. Just to get some of these trinkling in there as well. Just fishing it around. There, it's pretty similar to that colour that's already there, isn't it? But it is different. That'll do. And I'm going to grab some of the burnt sienna. Lighten it up a bit. Just like that. To get some of these values of tops in there as well. Go. 
Now I'm going to grab my darkest green, which is the forest green over here. And I want to put some of that black gesso in there just to get a really dark green for now because I want to map in the dark green and then we can start putting all the brighter colors on top. So coming from the bottom here, this is all. See, it looks like that perylene green that I ran out of. I've got to, I haven't still been to the art shop yet. I'll get there one day. This is the bottom layer. And then we're just simply going to make, let's just say from here, we'll get a, a pine tree up here, leaving some of those other colors there. And then get it darker at the bottom like so. And I'm going to do this pretty much, where are we? Get in between there, nice and fine. And then start just pushing it down to the darkness. What I'm going to do on this side is get the tops of them pretty much the way I want them. There we go. This is all the tops of the greens that I want in there nice and sharp and then we're simply going to pull these down as well then we'll start making the distinctive pine tree colors with it I'm just using a hog bristle fan brush and I'm just stamping it with the edge of the brush so it's all pretty uniform there so getting rid of any white bits that I see at the same time. So I've mixed up some more of that green but darker and I want to go from the, the black bottom here, see this black bottom here, and just scratch it up. So as the base of all this is going to be reasonably darker and then we can bring our lights in it accordingly. So I'm just doing it in an up and down motion, pretty much putting the darks where I want them. Just find any bits that look a bit too munty and not dark enough and put some grunt in them with some darker. There we go, look at that up there, up there. Now I'm going to wash this brush and then we'll start adding the other colours appropriately. Okay, we've got our sap green over here. I'm going to pull some of that to the side and grab some of the yellow ochre, yellow oxide, yellow ochre, whichever you want to call it. And we're going to add some of this in. I want to put this in just like so, get the top of it up there and then turn it to the edge and then just gently make a um, pine tree coming down, giving it the thickness you want, leaving some darkness within it. And when you get to the bottom there, stop about there, just so we're going to create the depth. Pick up some more of that. And let's say there's a little bit of a one here. And we're going to put other colours behind and in front as well. That's just one there. Get him all the way there. What I'm doing now is the background colours, the background tops of the trees. You'll see what I mean when I start putting the other colours in. These will be seen but set back by the next colours that I put on. To sit stuff back from it. Let's get them scratched out a bit. Next colour I'm going to pick up is the forest green. Now these trees are going to sit that one back, so we've got one here. Now, you know how I put that yellow in it? I feel I went just on them. Any more would have been too much. 
Now I want to sit that tree there with the yellow oxide that I just put in. I want to sit that back. So I'm going to come down with this one now and push that one back like so because this one's in front now. Put something there. Now I've just scratched in the littlest bit of black gesso with that because I'm feeling they are a little bit yeah look at that's better a little bit on the loud side I want some of this coming down get some of that in there if I can here that's plenty of green I want some green in here. You can't see this yet, but once it's highlighted and got all the other stuff there, it'll make sense. Okay. Over here, I've got some burn umber and some white. I want to just mix up. It doesn't have to be solidly mixed. Okay, just get it all on the knife there it's going to be quite simple to do okay now if you haven't knifed before and you think how do you knife on a trunk to a tree i'll show you i'm just going to simply wipe that knife so it's clean as buggery okay and you got the the top side and the bottom side let's just wiggle that into the paint so you got paint on the top side and on the bottom side okay and where i feel i want a trunk i'm all i have to do is just Tap it on there, keep it straight, and you got it on there. You're not going to have hit and miss. Oh, is it going to? Is it going to? Is it going to land? Is it going to not? And we'll just sort of put some trunks. Just keep loading it up. Put some trunks where it's hitting the ground. This bit here is what I'm concentrating on where I want it to hit the ground. Okay, we could probably get a fatter one here. So how do you make a fatter one? Just sort of double press it. Get something up there a bit. And it's very easy. And we'll pop one with just probably about here. Stamp it on. That's it, I'm a bit scared that one's going to run. Okay. Now I've given that a bit of a dry, those trunks, and now we're going to set them back with the other four colours, which are down here. Now you might need a bit of white in this one here just to open it up a bit and I want to put the if anything the darker ones in first and the brighter ones in front now see what I've done here see like here I'll continue with some of that color and then just bring it down and in front bring it down and then make some kind of fall tree there And see this trunk here? We'll pretty him up with a bit of a tree as well. In front of this tree here. Not this tree, this trunk. So I want to get the trunk not all covered up. bring it around in front of that kind of there we go okay grabbing this orange red gold color this is a nice four looking color I reckon and we'll bring some of this see from there it's right at the back there and we'll try and chisel some of this in 
right in front of that green there. Like that. We'll get this ugly colour here highlighted with this one to finish off what we've done there, see? Now I don't know what these trees look like in real life, but I'll give it a go. There we go. And we'll do the same. See how they look a bit bland? I'm trying to unbland them. Just to give it a bit of under colour and over colour. Now I'm just grabbing some of the cadmium yellow and let's say get some of this colour and make up some beautiful bright four colours with that as well. Try and get some, let's try and put something subtle in front of this trunk here. I don't want it looking yellow, I want it that kind of Four colour. The side of this big thing, yellowy oranged up as well. Something that can be sunken back there. And I'm just picking up some of the burnt. Yeah, no, where, where was I going with that? Oh, here. I want something over this trunk here. And that one. Now I want to green that one up a bit because it's too, too dark there. So where are we? We've got the forest green here. I'm going to use this just to get my darks back where I feel I could have lost them by stamping those other brighter colours in there. So have a look at your work and I'll probably want something nice and green just coming here. Watch, I'll put this one there, sink all that nonsense back, push it there a little bit, down to the f ground there. Coming down in front of them there. That's it there. Uh, we'll put this one right here. And on these, we want to subtly highlight them, okay? Just to give them that depth. Could probably have some green flashing up there as well, I suppose. Leaving the trunks there. I'm going to grab that yellow and We'll just get a yellow green with this, just a subtle bit to highlight one side of those green ones we just put on there, okay? Leaving the darks within it. Now I'm just mixing up the watercolour, so I've got the grey here and a little bit of the cerulean blue. And I do have some white over there as I need it. So I'll grab some white in there. Titanium white. And that's going to be the base for me stream water river system thing there. So we'll get this one mapped in. Now I want it coming from roughly here. Okay. 
and it's going to come around leaving dark colors within this matter okay and it's going to come around along here so I want a nice point coming out from there and it's going to come about from here there's the bottom there and it's going to come off the page about here so this corner bit can just keep it left and right in cahoots with the horizon line and we need a bit of dark between this and the land okay so there's that it'll be in and out so we'll come around Just to about there. Now what we do is have a bit of confident fun and then just get it. Leave little bits of black darkness within it and get all these artistically stroked like that. See how some of these might be up or down and you're joining on. You don't want it all crooked water. You want to come from here and that's why I say artistically stroke it like that and just play with it take your time you got confidence because you can do it I just added water to that and you can see the difference it made now I want to artistically even that up there we go here don't want too much dark we can you'll see later now that watercolour that we got, I want to grab a bit of black, not the black gesso, this is just black out of the tube. And I want to get a darker value of this, real dark. Not black, black, dark, but pretty dark grey, black, black, dark, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And work out, I want like, come from there, I want like a bit of a dark band here, something like, because I know I'm going to have some water, white water. Where you have the white water, you need it. Let's go from here. You need the darks to accentuate it. If you know what I mean. Well, you'll know what I mean once I've done it anyway. Uh, we'll get some scallopy bits here just to make it look like turmoil real close up. Like diamond shapes. That's what I'm kind of doing here. And then feathering out. And once we put our white highlights on here, you're just going to go, oh, I like that. And that's what you want within your art. You want to be able to say that and you want people that look at it to say, I like that. There we go. That'll do it. Now I've dried that and I'm just going to add the slightest bit of pure white. So I've got some pure white here, titanium white. Make sure your brush is clean. And we want the subtlest. Let's try here first. Wow, let's tone that down a bit. We're just gingerly putting the subtlest bits of pure white on there and the white is on top of all that dark just to make it look the part. Coming across, I'm just simply going across all those dark bits where I've got them. Just making agitated, frothy turmoil Probably come down in a bit of a waterfall there if you want. I don't know if I want to do that or not. I'll do a bit here just to see. And we've got some frothiness over that black stuff. And if any look too loud, just grab the darker colour and simply sit them back. Okay. I just want some feathery bits out here now. 
just at the end of it all. Just like that. And I think that's enough to make anyone go, boo, shit. What do you reckon? That's pretty much our stream. Now we'll bring that far bank into it and then bring everything on the side. You can see how the black has come into play underneath that watercolour. It's just given it depth and it has the value of the sky colours in there. Now to make things simple for the next bit, I'm grabbing the yellow ochre and the sap green. I want to mix up that dead, that green colour, get a bit of water in that, that green colour that has that kind of dead wood flavour within it as well. And this is simply going to be the foundation for all the ground cover alongside. So see, we've got that green, but it's sort of brownie colour in it as well. So we'll start out here first. I want to get this pretty much against here, where it's going to be, there, and against here. Now I'm going to leave a bit of black in between there. There we go. And then this will come in front of that there. Now this is just simply the ground, leave some darks in it, going up under those trees there, okay? There's going to be a hill there, so that'll get covered up. But I'll practice in that area. And this is very doable, very simple. Let's grab some of this. It's, it's all laying down under the forest floor there. There's bits back, there's bits forward. We're going to put lighter and darker values within this. So don't you worry. And then, get some there. Now I've gone past some of those tree trunks. That's okay, because I can always grab that tree trunk color and put back. Now this bank here on this side, I want it, let me get it touching the water first with a little bit of black. I want it coming up like so. and leaving bits of dark with the inside of it, okay? This is coming to there, okay? That's all gonna be covered up for that mountain, but I've gotta get that color done first before I sink it back. So while I've got the paint going, I'll get this side of the stream, river, lake, whatever it is. It's a water body, that's what it is. going uphill, it's got a bit of a bank, so I'm doing the brush strokes like that. Come up here, see how leaving some of the darks next to the water in this green, how it plays its part, giving your painting a nature-fired look about it. <laughs> hey, it's gonna make people go, I like that painting, it's got a lot of nature vibes about it, it's given that vibe of nature. There we go, this is the base color, remember? Okay, I'm grabbing some red gold and we can probably put a little bit of this with it. There we go, that color there, like a rusty color. And we just want very little of this, very little. So, as we're setting that back, let's wipe a bit of it off up there. And I want, I want this all scratchy and you can see the green through it. It's very scratchy. Getting it simply behind here. And I want to get this all scratchy and done. Like I said, I'll sink those trees back, the tree trunks back where I've lost them. And I want some of this pretty much radiating all along this edge of the bank here. See, that's how I want it scratchy like that. Dead autumn colours there. 
on the bend I'm mainly putting it on the bend there and letting it feather back I have a few little aspects of it here and then some of this can be just subtly hit with the light as well so with that color we're picking up some of the white not too much and there's just enough to highlight some of that stuff really hitting it with getting hit with light so let's say about here and all the way underneath the darks there pretty much here it's scratching that's what I want it to do see when I started it started with blobs but now I've worn enough off it it's scratching just the way I want it to perform now I just had a thought if you want to be cheeky like me grab some of the yellow here we go I found a bit here get it in a in a dotified way onto your brush and let's just see if we can just gently put some of the um, yellow leaves on the ground that have fallen you know what I mean do you hear me there we go they look a bit blobby there I might have to tone them down a bit yeah that's better Put a bit out there. Now that bit there where I've buggered it up, see here? All I'm going to do is just simply wipe my brush, grab that colour that I had before, the darker of it, and simply tone it down a bit. And that's how you fix loud mistakes up. Okay, let's go to this side. So we're going to grab that green that we mixed up here earlier with the uh, yellow ochre. And we're going to simply sit back this bit here coming from there so see you got a shadow i want a shadow under it but none on top so i'm going to go the very top where i want it and this is going to come across here like so boom now let's leave some darks in there to against the water dribble it in not too much just subtly enough to make it look like Oh yeah, I like that. You know, that vibe. You want the I like that vibe about it. So I'm just tinkering along here. Tinkering along. You can do this. Just practice. It's fun. It's exciting. It's rewarding. And then we're going to just start toning this side down now. It's not so much of a hill on this side. And you're leaving bits of the black. The blacks are helping you make the shape of the land. Now what I might do, just to be a little bit cheeky, is let's got some white over here. Let's grab a bit of white so we can tintulate it or whiteize it. Come from here. Just so as we can create the shape of this going flat and then up there sort of thing if you know what I mean and then I'm going to add some dirt rocky stuff to this side as well yeah that's looking the part this will determine how flat this bank is whether it's hilly or flat or not I'm just simply going to grab some of me black and this green I want a really dark green just so as I can get roughly with on this bit of mound here, I want to get a bit of a shrub here. So I need to make the shrub. You might not see all of it, but it's there. It's there. Okay, nice and hairy at the top. And where's that paint? And we'll put another one sticking out from here. Some kind of shrub. There we go. Now this can have a bit of pull down shadow on it if you want. And that one can have a little bit of a shadow as well. 
Now after drying that I want to use the same brush, I've washed it out and I want to grab this red gold with some of that burnt sienna in it because that's the flavour I want about there. Now I've cleaned it, those shrubs, I want to keep the shadow under it and I want to make a shrub like that and like that. And then we're going to highlight this just to make it pop. This is over there. Okay. Simply grab the white. Just so we can... There we go. There it is there. That's that shrub I just put in there. It looks like a shrub, I hope. It's kind of clashing with what's behind it, but she'll be all right. A bit more brighter just to see what happens. And we've, had, we've got the shadow underneath it as well. Okay, now just to finish this side of the river off, grabbing this colour again, where are we? The burnt sienna. And we kind of want bits like this, which are pretty much rocks jammed within that face of the riverbed there. Leave clumps of green there and bits of it can feather up into the grass there. I do want a darker value of that so I'm just stabbing that in the black a little bit just to get some pockets of dark within here scattering around because this is where I want to highlight it you see and without these darks it's going to look wrong. You'll see. Now this is very wet. Oh, it's not very wet, but it's wettingly wet. I'm going to dry it before I highlight it. So I'm going to grab the white and this bit of mixture of the burnt sienna and the red gold. And we'll just simply spay out some of this. I want some of this brighter here. Dribbling down into that, on top of them darks. And as it comes closer, you can make a bit more deliberate marks if you can. I'm trying. <laughs> Just so it looks like, you know, dirty dirt, rocks, grass. Didn't quite know what to do there up there as well. If it's too bright we can add some, um, uh, what do you call it, darker values within it. Put the green, sitting it down. I'm just trying to get some deliberate rocks within there as well, you know. Just on the edge of my brush there. Some rocks here, fix them up. Just adds a bit more. Oh wow, I like that attitude towards your painting, you know. Pretty much like that. Yeah, they got light hitting them. They're all autumn. In Australia, we call it autumn, but I'm pretty sure in the States and they used to call it fall. Okay, I'm just going to autograph this and then we'll whack a frame on it. And I'd like to thank everybody who follows my channel, all my patrons that support me every month. Become a patron and check out the extra goodies they get behind the scenes and 
advanced knowledge of what's coming out. Okay, let's whack a frame on there. Oh yeah, that don't look too shabby. We've got an autumn river scene. Autumn colours there, overcast sky, same reflections in the water. And I know you can do it. Well, what a wonderful painting that is. Lovely, colourful, a great beginner's subject. And just remember you can do it with a bit of practice, okay? And remember also, if you like what I'm doing, to tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.